Hi, my name is Ayal Tritel. I'm Director of Technical Marketing here at Redexio Systems. What I'm going to demonstrate to you today is the Redexio backdating feature combined with databases. So let's dive in right to the demonstration. So what we have here is the Redexio Storage Manager. This is a, an innovative uh, new uh, user interface that we've uh, developed here at Redexio, which uh, we believe is very easy to use and uh, simple to understand, straightforward user interface for, for a storage system. So let's just browse a little bit here. Uh, this is the dashboard view. You can see that we have some hosts and volumes configured. We have some um, throughput going on here and very good savings ratio um, on, on a decent uh, data set that I've got here. You can see that I uh, uh, have here the Reduxio HX550 system. This is basically a, a flash hybrid storage array uh, that contains um, eight SSD devices and 16 disk drives. This is a kind of a lab system that we have here. Uh, this is the back view of the system. This is a dual controller 2U system. Let's look at performance a little bit. So we've got some uh, tiering on, going on here between uh, SSDs and HDDs. You can see the situation uh, over the last seven days. Uh, I've written uh, some, some decent amount of data here and it's kind of flowing between the tiers continuously. If I look at performance, uh, I've got some uh, workloads uh, running here in parallel of the, uh, uh, of the test that I'm going to uh, show to you. And let's look at the actual environment of the database. So I have a database server that is named uh, DB1. This is a Windows 2012 server. Uh, 2002 uh, R2 con uh, running a SQL Server 2012 and this server is connected to two volumes the ERP and front-end volumes let's look at uh, these uh, disks in uh, the Windows disk uh, management interface and uh, these uh, disks each contain a database both of these databases are actually one single business application if you may um, our core ERP system. So let's connect to the SQL Server Management Studio and uh, actually see the databases that we have configured here. So we have two databases, the ERP and front end that we discussed already. And uh, what I have here is basically two SQL queries. One of them is a query that basically inserts, it creates two tables, one in each database, and inserts continuously timestamps of the current time into a table. So let's query those two tables. So I'm going to refresh the query here. So what you can see is that there's continuously the, there are new lines coming in, new records being inserted into the database, uh, the two databases basically in parallel. Uh, this basically represents a business application that is configured with two separate databases which are stored on different volumes. So as these queries are uh, uh, running, what I'm going to do right now is basically uh, perform some damage. And what I'm going to do is actually format those two volumes. This is actually not going to be very pleasant for the database, I can tell you that. Uh, and it's going to be uh, quite fun to, uh, to watch here. So basically Windows tells me the volume is in use, obviously, because SQL Server is, is locking those files, but uh, I'm enforcing these formats anyhow. So this is the front end application. Let's format that as well. And we'll need to accept the format. So this is basically uh, represents a major damage to the database, uh, the two databases. Uh, you can see the E drive is empty and uh, following E is also the uh, F drive also um, completely empty. So let's go back to SQL Server uh, management here. If I run the SQL Server query, the select queries, well, these are shamefully uh, reporting an error. And obviously the uh, insert script also, if you go to the end, uh, has also failed because uh, the database basically does not exist anymore. So what we can do is actually go to the management SQL Server logs and open the latest log file of the database. And what I can do here is search for the first time that the server has reported an error. So 
basically you can see here that everything was running fine for a few minutes from 141.57 up to 143.35 so 143.35 is the first time an error is reported on the database so uh, we should remember that time it's very important so 143.35 p.m. so if I go back to the uh, Reduxia Storage Manager, I can go uh, to the um, ERP volume and we have this feature called backdating. So this is a very cool data recovery uh, feature that provides you recovery without planning to any second in the past. So uh, let's try to use that here. So we can take the volume literally to any second in the past and we can clone or revert the volume so here I'm actually going to use the, the clone feature so I'm actually not going to go back right to uh, 143.35 so for the sake of the demo I'm just gonna uh, go back to just a few seconds before the format uh, sometimes there's like one or two seconds um, difference between the host and the uh, and the reduction systems and, and I'm not actually gonna try that out here so we're going to try 143.32, just three seconds before uh, I send the format commands. So 143.32, let's clone the first volume. So that's the ERP volume. And we have this um, um, side effect, if you may, of the, um, of the way we, we designed the metadata which is the core feature behind backdating, this allows us to do something very, very cool, which is what we call automatic consistency. So uh, while I'm typing here the same timestamp as I've done for the uh, ERP volume, uh, let me explain to you what I'm doing here. So basically, in the reduction system, if you backdate various volumes to the same second, they're basically gonna be consistent between themselves. So without the need to configure consistency groups, we basically allow you to uh, consistently recover uh, different volumes to the same second. So here I uh, uh, set a prod that the ERP and front end, uh, sorry, I have that clone already, so I can cancel it out. So basically the ERP volume and the front-end volumes are uh, representing one single business application so what if you needed to recover both these volumes at the same time right so here without any planning I can uh, actually uh, very easily perform that so all I need to do right now is go back to the clone volumes and assign them to the uh, database server so I'm gonna assign the ERP clone and I'm actually going to go to the front end clone and assign that as well. So you can see that uh, with a very easy drag and drop uh, user interface, I can assign uh, volumes to hosts. This uh, user interface was designed up front to support mobile devices and support touch based uh, devices such as laptops or, 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 or uh, you know, um, iPads and so on. So uh, let me go back to the disk management of Windows. I'll uh, rescan devices here. And what I expect to see here is the two volumes, which I just cloned. So if I online these volumes, basically what I'm gonna get is uh, two new drive letters. And these are G and H, let's open G. And uh, thankfully enough, uh, G contains our ERP database. And if I take a look at H, H contains our front end database. So I've restored the two, uh, the two volumes uh, with the databases. So let me go back to SQL Server Management. And what I have here is the um, existing volumes, existing uh, databases. What I'm actually gonna do is offline these two, um, two databases because I don't need them anymore. They are actually, um, you know, corrupt databases, right? They're, they're down, they're non-existing, not really corrupt, but non-existing. 
uh, I will detach those two and the reason I'm doing it is is not it's not necessary uh, it's just to simplify the demonstration so that I can run the same select queries on the recovered databases without changing any names so um, avoiding conflicts uh, in the names of the databases so I'm actually going to attach now the recovered uh, databases so I've got one in the G drive let me select that one so that's my ERP database and I'm going to attach actually the front-end database as well that's in the H drive and you can see that all the database uh, contents came back uh, with all the tables inside and everything so I'm very very thankful of this um, backdating feature and all I have left to do is to run the query uh, the select query again and see that we actually came back to just a few seconds prior to the uh, failure obviously there's some time difference here because uh, Windows uh, stages writes to disk and that's uh, and there's some database uh, internal IOs obviously going on so the timestamp is actually a little bit before uh, but I can show you the the actual contents of the volumes are actually uh, right into uh, they went right back to 143.32 so that concludes our uh, demonstration for uh, Reduxio backdating feature thank you very much